I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Well, 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 everyone. I hope you are uh, doing well, everyone. Uh, my name is Jonathan, and uh, you're watching uh, Wrestle Rock Podcast. Uh, tonight, uh, uh, this is uh, my partner, uh, Benoit, a.k.a. Nostrada Ben. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, not too bad, and you? Yes, not today, bad, not bad, because... Today, uh, we have uh, not one, but two special guests. The former uh, WWE uh, talents. Uh, Mr. B. Brian Blair and Jumping Jim Bronzel, formerly and known as uh, the Killer Bees. Yes, how are you doing, guys? Very well. Thank you very much for having us. Doing yeah, wonderful. Thank you so wonderful much. Uh, uh, this is Nos an honor. Thomas Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, this is an honor and privilege. Uh, honestly, uh, this is very cool that you uh, that you agree uh, this uh, this time with us. So, uh, with, with from, from the bottom of, of my heart, thank you so much, guys. Of my heart, too. Yes, yes. And uh, <laughs> well, thank we you remember for... a lot of uh, memories, uh, uh, such as WrestleMania 3 and I, and uh, they, they saw you in a ring, and that was just uh, amazing. So, uh, I believe that we can uh, take a good moment uh, together. So, uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be on the Wrestle Rock podcast with you guys, of course, and especially knowing that we have a predominantly Canadian audience. And, um, you know, Jimmy and I spent a lot of time in Canada. Uh, perhaps Toronto was our actual best town. We loved Quebec. We loved Montreal. We loved uh, all over Canada, uh, traveling all over Canada. And, um, you know, we consider us, uh, we consider you our brothers and sisters to the north, and uh, we just appreciate our Canadian friends so much. Uh, Thank that, you very much, that, Mr. Blair. That's pretty cool, and uh, uh, Jimmy, that's the same, uh, honestly. Uh, just before, just for you, uh, listener, uh, just before the interview, uh, we spoke uh, probably uh, five or ten minutes uh, from uh, anything that the guys are amazing honestly this is very cool so uh we're going to go forward uh with uh, some questions um before um professional wrestling uh we know that jim um you play in football uh for uh, for many years and you you got to try out with uh, the washington uh, redskins right yes sir yeah yeah it was and, uh, yeah I, i played one year of semi-pro football in a in a town called Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And from there, I got an invite for um, what they call a, a, a free agent tryout. So I went down to uh, Washington, D.C., and there it was only four or five days. And there was a lot of guys there, and I, I was scheduled as a tight end. I only weighed 220. So okay. um, I thought I did pretty well, but they only invited me. I think three guys to the uh, formal uh, fall uh, tryout. So uh, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> And um, can you explain to us why your football career has been stopped? Because uh, by you, you are a, a pro wrestler. So <laughs> well, you know, if, if you realize that um, – You know, you have an opportunity, and, and rather than trying to bounce around with different teams, trying to get a tryout with, uh, matter of fact, the Vikings uh, told me that they would like to give me a tryout, but they they didn't want to cut any Minnesota kids. So, in other words, they were they, they weren't going to keep me. So, so I had the opportunity, you know, uh, with Greg Gagne, uh, who he and I were uh, teammates at the University of Minnesota, and then he transferred okay. to Wyoming. So. And maybe this is somewhere down on your list, but so Greg invited me after I came back to the university to get my degree 
he invited me to come to his dad's wrestling camp and he had Ken Patera and he had Kazro Vaziri and he had the nature boy, Ric Flair, yeah. Greg Gagne, myself and Bob Bruggers. So what are, that's, what tell him who Bob Bruggers is. Oh, Bob Bruggers was a, a hell of a, a athlete at the University of Minnesota, great basketball player. And then he played uh, linebacker for San Diego uh, Chargers for a number of years. Yep. And okay. then actually he he probably had, out of all of us, he, he probably had the, the best God-given talent, but he was involved in a plane accident, a plane crash, okay. and broke, broke his back and never wrestled sure. again. Oh, okay. okay. It's a, it's a little bit the, the, the same situation that Ric Flair. Uh, they were in the same plane together. In 1975? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. There was in the same plane with that Yeah. Plane. With the Johnny uh, Valentine too? Yes. Oh, yeah. That was a, a horrible story. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. God they lived. Yeah. My... Okay. Uh, Jim, uh, you're, uh, you're growing up in Minnesota? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it uh, the reason that you made the decision to join the... Uh, American Wrestling Association, owned by the late Vern Gagne, earlier in your wrestling career. Well, like I said, I, I was, you know, I couldn't make it playing football, and I always, you know, uh, figured that I would like to do something athletic. And little did I know that at age, you know, if somebody would have asked me at 18 years old if I had a 25-year career in pro wrestling, I would have said you're crazy. But it just happened, and um, I took advantage of the opportunity, and, you know, I, I never looked back, and away I went. Okay, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, about um, uh, training and stuff like that, so, uh, uh, Mr. Blair, can you uh, explain uh, to us uh, how you have, uh, uh, you have been uh, dropped to uh, Hori Mets? Uh, Matsuda, uh, Hiro uh, Matsuda uh, as your trainer because you are from uh, United States and uh, I'm just curious. The, 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 the Matsuda audience. is the same trainer uh, as Paul Hogan too? Yes, absolutely. Uh, actually, uh, during the three and a half summers, I trained in what they call the dungeon and they called it the dungeon because there was no air condition whatsoever and we're in Florida, a very tropical climate in Tampa. Okay. And as a matter of fact, right now, the heat index is 105, uh, as we're speaking. And um, it was, it was guys, it was so hot in there. And then they had the big, uh, uh, like, 1,000 or 10,000 watt light bulb, 10,000 watt light bulb that went over the ring. And uh, so we'd wrestle in the ring and do calisthenics beside the ring. So that made it even more hot. There was nothing in there. We beg him to turn the fan on. And... So it was very difficult. It's just like Jimmy went through a very difficult. Uh, there's there's three places uh, where it's considered very very difficult in the states, uh, kind of like Wiggins is in uh, in England and um, and that's Tampa in the dungeon, and that's uh, <clears throat> with Vern Gagne in Minneapolis and that's in yeah. Calgary okay. with the heart. And uh, we all kind of <clears throat> learned the same, you know, chewed our teeth the same way and. Um, uh, broke in very very difficult you know crazy and stuff is it that guy who uh who learned you uh your perfect drop kick <laughs> i don't know who kick? taught jimmy yeah. the perfect drop kick but uh he certainly yeah. uh, had the perfect drop kick yeah 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 i, I saw that i mean I jimmy saw... would hit him coming down uh in the face and my drop kick would hit him just in the lower chest <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that, I was, that, that's yeah, probably the, 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 the best drop king I seen in my life. Uh, you are in the top uh, five with AJ Styles and many other uh, wrestler with a, a perfect drop kick. Honestly. <laughs> well, just, thank just you. Just look at the photo. I got a photo. Pleasure. I'm gonna grab it off my wall in a minute. I can grab it off my wall, and uh, it's uh, at the A and E Stadium in Toronto. And okay, it, was yeah. on, it was on the front page of the Toronto Sun. And uh, as I glance at the picture, uh, let's see, um, Dory Funk Jr. is probably, I know for a fact he's six foot two. And uh, Jimmy's like, uh, you know, a foot taller, a foot higher than okay. Dory Funk Jr. is when he first connects. Wow. Amazing. Wow. This is impressive. Well, that is not easy. 
Well, he, the deal was that I was I, I I was blessed with the jumping ability. They always say the white man can't jump, but I was the exception. Okay. And um, I was a high jumper in high school and okay. in college. And uh, that really helped me in, in pro wrestling because it was such a uh, easy for me to jump. You know, the, the only problem is that I didn't realize that after so many years of, you know, 25 years of throwing drop kicks, I ruined my shoulders because when I came down, I came yeah. down. And my yeah, forearms you, and you my need elbow to bump, uh, on the on the on, the elbow. Elbow, on your elbow, but on your yeah. elbow. Yeah. Well, I did it on my forearms, and it became a shock mm -hmm. absorber, so it it and, ruined that. Yeah, and then, it ruined my shoulder, so I had both my shoulders replaced. Mm -hmm. I just had this one replaced uh, twelve weeks ago. So, but you know, I was very you know uh, I was very blessed with the ability to jump. Oh, Brian's got that picture. I don't know if. Oh. You can, Oh, that, that, that doesn't do that. I don't know if it's the, the big event in 1986. Yes, you can just see Dory right there. Uh, yeah, is that good? and it's and it's That's funny because I I was at one of those shows and uh, signing shows, and this fellow had a picture that I saw of me, and it was drop kicking Dory Funk again, and it was in Tokyo. Wow! And, oh, Tokyo, Japan. Yeah. And and I it was in 1981, so it was a great picture. So um, I asked the fellow, great I memory. said, "Yeah, I said, could I please have a couple copies of those?" So now I have a hundred copies downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Mr. Blair, you start uh, your career in CWF uh, Championship Wrestling from Florida, from from Florida, sorry, with Eddie Graham, and you face Pat Patterson and Ivan Koloff. Do you think that Pat Burson can help you to get a WWF contract in the 80s? No, 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 uh, okay. no because he wasn't. Uh, I, I had already worked for um, for Vince uh, both in 82 and 84. OK. And uh, for Vince Sr. And so, oh, okay, okay, okay. I already established a, a relationship there when I came back uh, to um, become the Florida uh, heavyweight champion in the Florida territory, which was the number one belt. Um, I, I got the top baby face spot and, um, uh, we were doing great business. I was traveling around with ravishing Rick rude. Um, we were doing tremendous business everywhere. And, um, uh, I wasn't sure if I, I thought I was going to come back uh, according to Vince senior to wrestle for the intercontinental championship when I left. And, um, then I got a call from Hulkster and he asked me if I knew Jumpin' Jim Brunzel. And this is all while business is still going good in Florida. And Vince was on his raid, cherry picking all the top talent from yeah. all the territories so he could uh, fulfill his dream, collapse the territories and become one big uh, corporation, which he did uh, eventually, although there was always another one on his heels. Uh, he uh though was successful in getting the territories but terry called me and said uh hey have you ever heard of jumping jim brunzel and i said yeah in the magazines i've never met him and i know he's uh a tag team and he said yeah well vince wants to create a really uh elite tag team division and he wants only the best and i mean he's going to make this very very uh competitive very serious i had uh, a couple demands a i wanted to make sure we got the belts that was promised then. Uh, uh, he told me what a good guy Jimmy was, uh, which we met in Brantford, Ontario. Um, and 45 minutes before the match, um, George Scott was there and we had to come up with a name. And finally, we came up with Killer Bees. Vince loved it. We became the Killer Bees. And Leaping Lanny Poffo reaches down in his bag and he pulls out a couple pair of bee trunks. It was like he had a big hockey bag. <laughs> He had everything but the kitchen sink in that hockey bag. And uh, <laughs> so uh, we actually wore those killer bee trunks and became the killer bees uh, that night in Brantford, Ontario. And uh, the tag team division uh, to this day is legendary. I mean, you had the um, galley, you had the Islanders, you had um, uh, Demolition, you had Strike Force, you had um, uh, the Heart Foundation, which was our number one, uh, probably our without that's a doubt, awesome. Our best that's awesome. Yeah, opponent. Can you imagine that you 
you wrestled in the good old days. That that that's unbelievable. You 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 call demolition. You call the Islander Heart Foundation all legends. That that that's that's yeah. The Sheik and Volkov. They were amazing. I, I don't have words for them. <laughs> well, really you know, and, and also too, we wrestled at the uh, uh, Montreal Forum, and we wrestled two different teams. We wrestled the. Uh, um, the British Bulldogs, yeah. and we had a, a great match with them. And then we, I, I believe we wrestled yes. Strike Force there too. Yes. Uh, and just had great matches with them. And it was a big thrill for us to wrestle in the forum because, you know, a lot of, you know, the forum has got so much history to it for hockey. Yeah. But the, the fact that we could <laughs> wrestle there, it was great. Yeah. And uh, the populations of Montreal and uh, three million Montreal, people. Yeah. yeah. And all the the province uh, collaborate with with uh, any shows such as music shows, yep. uh, wrestlings, and we are uh, we are allowed. <laughs> so uh, and we participate and collaborate with uh, with each other. So yes, uh, I believe that you have uh, probably good memories in forum. Uh, Great memories. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, be, uh, before WWE, you worked to a different uh, wrestling promotion, um, guys. So, uh, what was your favorite uh, wrestling promotion uh, except the, the WWF? For me, oh. for oh, uh, uh, both of you, both of you, and AWA for me, Minneapolis. That's natural because it was a home area, and okay. we were accepted there. We did well. Had great talent in both areas, made a decent living. So, I mean, if you can do that and be in your home, <laughs> that's really beneficial if you're, you know, uh, in any job. Yeah. yeah. Today it's very, it's uh, very different because uh, there is a lot of promotion, but between you, uh, you and me, uh, we can, you can, you can like. Uh, How we say, uh, Gong, you said, uh, win your life with uh, pro wrestling. This is very, uh, very different right, because, because uh, in the past there was uh, many territories and now uh, only WWE, yeah. AEW, and uh, yes. wrestling promotions in Japan. Yeah, yeah, and so you, you actually guys, Indies. you actually have 10 television shows on right now. Wow, on, on television, there's yeah. 10 different wrestling programs on from um. Uh, WWE, AEW, uh, you have Impact, Impact. Underground, NWA, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, Impact, Impact is number three, by the way. And, uh, you know, it goes on from there. So there's uh, no shortage in places to go uh, for the people now. It's just a lot different. For example, when Jimmy was wrestling in AWA, I'll let you tell, I'll let Jimmy tell you his schedule. But in Tampa, our schedule for the territories were we live in tampa so uh monday we went to west palm beach with it which is south of tampa tuesday we would wrestle in tampa at the armory uh wednesday we would do television at 11 o'clock in the morning and then we'd either fly or drive to miami 350 miles each way uh that night uh thursday would be jacksonville which is up north Friday would be Fort Myers or another spot show. Saturday would either be Lakeland uh, Civic Center, um, which is fairly close, or the St. Pete Bayfront Center, which is also fairly close to Tampa. You and wrestled then, every day. <laughs> and then Sunday, every other <laughs> Sunday, we would do double shots, High Life Fronton at noon, and then Orlando Eddie Graham Sports Complex at 8 o'clock that evening. So when you put your uh, two television matches on top of those eight matches you're wrestling nine times a week and we very seldom had a day off very seldom wow now wow. jimmy's wow. was a lot more uh hoity-toity than what we have well we were you know in minnesota very much like northern you know areas like canada everybody is you know sort of uh confined to their houses during the the winter because the weather's bad so The wrestling promotion, Vern Gagne, uh, yeah, we had Winnipeg, Chicago, oh gosh, Denver, um, I can't, let's see, uh, Milwaukee, Green Bay, 
uh, a lot of towns in between. And it, it worked out that we'd work 14 to 16 times a month, yeah, which, well. which was really great because you had time off. Mm -hmm. And when we went to New York, I mean, there was 60 guys, there was 20 guys in a town and there was three towns every night. Mm -hmm. So Brian and I, and this is, I have it in my books, Brian and I for three and a half years averaged 27 days a month on the road. Wow. And that's flying every single day, almost every day, getting a rent -a cart getting a motel, going to the gym, going to the restaurant, going to the bar, going to bed, getting up, doing the whole thing over again. And we did that for yeah. three and a half years. Everybody <laughs> did. It was crazy. Wow, wow, wow. Kyle, the Iron Sheik went 92 days in a row without a break. 92. That's three months. Wow. Oh, oh shit. We went 67 days. Yeah. Time, oh. And it was, it was terrible. I mean, it wasn't long after that that I gave my notice. Um, it was, uh, it was difficult um, back then because wrestling was, it was on fire. It didn't matter where you went. Uh, the houses were great uh, all over the place. That's why they had three teams. Yeah. And uh, quite frankly, I guess, um, I don't know why Vince doesn't run more towns than he does, but uh, I guess it's organization. Um, but uh, he, shoot, he could run 10 towns a night if he wanted to. Yeah. Okay, and Mr. Blair and Mr. Bronzel, when did you first meet? We met in, like like Brian said, we met in Poughkeepsie, uh, New York, and I, I, I almost, I think it was June 23rd or 24th, 1985. Wow. That's, that's when... 37 we, years ago. Yeah, and it was, you know, it, it was... It was sort of up in the air, you know. I, I I hadn't met Brian before, but you know we got along very well. And and uh, the New York area was very different in the fact that in other areas like Florida or Minneapolis or Texas or wherever Calgary, everybody knew their position. So you know, I mean, uh, when we started as the Killer Bees. The, the problem was, I think, that uh, even though we had good matches with a lot of the talent there, so much of the talent was afraid, you know, I mean, you know, the heel teams, you know, whether it be the the hearts or, or, or whatever, you know, demolition, uh, the heel teams were afraid to give the babyface team too much because they look weak. So consequently, it was sort of uh, it was a lot harder to really have a good match, even though we did have really good matches, but it, it seemed like we had to work that much harder to get the same match that we would have gotten Tampa or Minneapolis on a, a nightly basis. That's just my opinion. <laughs> and uh, um, it's the break time. So uh, we would like to discuss uh, about uh, your um, merchandise because uh, we have a uh, beautiful uh, website, and uh, oh, uh, we need uh, we need to discuss uh, about that. Uh, I can just take uh, one second just to share your uh, your uh, the link your your uh, your 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 website. Uh, uh, do you see my uh, do you see my uh, my screen, uh, guys? Yes, yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, perfect. Oh, okay. oh, killer B store. Wow. Yeah, the Killer Bee store, because uh, this is very important, listener, uh, to go uh, to go there and uh, and encourage uh, all of these guys uh, immediately uh, yeah. immediately after um, our um, our interview. Uh, I place an order on uh, on uh, on this uh, wonderful uh, uh, shop. Uh, you can uh, see uh, all memories, uh, shirts, and uh, nice. replica mask, and uh, oh, posters, sure. posters uh, signatures, and uh, uh, <laughs> very cool uh, uh, comic books here, and uh, um, other uh, uh, younger uh, 
B. Brian, Blair and J.P. Jung, and, and uh, Jumping Jim Brunzel, the Killer Bees, uh, signed by uh, by themselves. So, and um, um, uh, for ending, we um, if you go to blurb.com, um, that's it. Yeah, they, they, put, there is yeah. a uh, very cool um, true stories uh, from. Uh, uh, Mr. Bronzel. Mr. Bronzel. So uh, encourage that, guys. Do you have a DVD, a best of of you in the DVD? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. cool. Well, I, I, I don't know if we have a DVD, but we do. Uh, I think there might be a CD that I had called Matlands. So I don't know if that's available. I don't know. I'll, maybe if you guys front me your uh, address, I can send you a couple of them. Although oh, it's getting harder and harder to send to to Canada, you have to fill out the, uh, uh, you know, um, what do you call it, Dagon, going through different countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if you can, uh, if you need help for uh, so, uh, for something, I'm a marketing specialist. Uh, All right. Oh, really? So, uh, He's an expert. Uh, yes. And, All uh, right, yes, Jonathan. I'm uh, a graphic uh, designer. Uh, uh, until uh, the, since uh, 20, uh, 20 years so if you need uh, uh, help or something uh, just contact me and uh, for you uh, it's uh, it's free uh, guys uh, uh, the, the, <clears throat> we appreciate that, that. that's and, and, my uh, that, that's my donate <laughs> yes yeah 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 if you get a chance um actually we sold more books last month our first month uh that we beat our initial month was last month so Very people good, are right? really into uh, okay. truth be told. And um, I highly recommend Jimmy's book. It is really down to earth and you'll get pictures that you've never seen, stories you've never seen. All right, Jimmy's reading. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's really fascinating. That took me almost two years to write that. Um, but um, I would really like to, if you guys don't mind, mention the Cauliflower Alley Club. Um, I've been involved in Jimmy's <clears throat> been there uh, several times uh, uh, in supporting roles and in being honored roles. Um, him and uh, Greg Gagne were the uh, one of the first uh, tag teams honored um, when I was president. And uh, every year we have a reunion. We're having our 56th reunion in Las Vegas. It's very inexpensive to go. You can go to caulifloweralleyclub.org. Uh, caulifloweralleyclub.org for $25. You can become a member. All the money that we raise goes to help the boys. Every dime goes to help the boys that have fallen on difficult financial times. And okay. we don't mention their names unless they give us permission. But guys like Mr. Wonderful Paul Warndorf, Kamala, I mean, we saved their houses. Um, bad news, uh, uh, bad news, uh, Brown. Bad news, Brown. Bad news, Brown. Uh, we um, got a chemotherapy and off the streets and uh a, a lot of, we just help a lot of people and um we really need the support to continue to come in and if you can come to the reunion if you come one time i guarantee you you'll be addicted tuesday that we have a tremendous uh, tremendous um lineup this year on tuesday night we have uh, memphis mania we have cherry lawler um we have um the rock and roll express uh Punk Tom Penn is there Oh, we have tons. Of, they're, they're all being on. It's from Memphis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's no, no, it's no, from Memphis. For Tuesday night, then Wednesday night, we have another night with like JBL and uh, all kinds of honorees and stars. I mean, it's amazing. If you go to caulifloweralleyclub.org, rather than me taking up more of your time, uh, just go to caulifloweralleyclub.org and you can check it all out. You can see how much okay. it is. And if you could be there, we'd love to have you. That, that that's pretty cool. So uh, just before the interview, I spoke with uh, with Benoit and. Uh, and I said uh, uh, we have no choice to take an air uh, to take a, an airplane to uh, to go in a, uh, uh, to go in a WrestleCon uh, to, to to shake your hands, guys. <laughs> it will be an honor to us. Yeah, yeah. WrestleCon was great. Yes, yeah. it was. It was a lot of people. Uh, what was your uh, your next uh, shows? We were just in Dallas, so it won't Dallas. be until next year. Next event is uh, Dallas. It coincides with WrestleMania. Okay. okay. AT&T Stadium? It's in California, yeah, uh, next year, right, Jim? 
Oh, uh, next year, yeah. Yeah, next year. The stadium of the Los Angeles Chargers, if I yes. remember. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, we can uh, continue with uh, some of our other uh, questions. So, uh, where you get uh, the the killer bees name? Because uh, I read uh, on the internet uh, some of rumors that uh, Hulk Hogan uh, uh, have probably uh, uh, put the names on a map. So, uh, is it a rumor or it's true? A fact or rumor? A fact. That's a rumor. That's, That's a rumor. A rumor? Okay. <laughs> But it did come from Florida, and I'll let Brian tell you. Yeah, actually, um, you know, George Scott came to Jimmy and I with no time, and they said uh, Vince wants a flashy name, some kind of a flashy name, and um, we were sitting and throwing names back against each other, and bees, bees, you know, we uh, something bees kept coming in our mind, and um, I thought about um, – uh, the 82 Dolphins um, that uh, was it the 72 or 82, 82, I think Dolphins that were undefeated and all that they were called the killer bees because their last names began with B Baumgartner, uh, Bonacani, uh, mm -hmm. this tremendous team. And they were the killer bees. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. I said, the killer bees. And Jimmy says, I like the killer bees. And we, we chatted a little bit. I forget who, everybody that was right there, but uh, George Scott came uh, back after he, he hadn't left the, the room yet. And um, uh, I remember George the Animal Steel was there. And uh, we said, uh, hey, George, how about the killer bees? And he goes, killer bees, killer bees. He goes, I like it. Let me see what uh, the boss says. So he goes, talks to Vince and uh, comes back and says, hey, Vince loves it. You guys are now the killer bees. Yeah. So that's how the killer that's bees. That's the story behind the, 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 the killer bees. So, uh, do you know um, if you uh, if you uh, have an um, how we said uh, sorry I switched my word um, an influence uh, behind uh, you know that um, Wu Tang Clan have a uh, a album uh, called uh, Wu Tang Killer Bees. <laughs> so that 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 do, do you know if he. You can't have an influence behind all of this or? <laughs> well, I don't know, but let me just put it like this. At one time, Jimmy and I were the hottest tag team on the planet. And there is no denying that. Everywhere yeah. we went was hot. And we kept asking, you know, when are we getting the belts? George Scott would say, oh, you're getting the belts. But right now the hunts, the, the money's in the chase. The money's in the chase. Mm -hmm. Then we, we were promised, I was promised the belts before I even got there. I was promised the belts a couple of times. We were promised the belts on a couple of different occasions. And then, you know, it, you can only do so much, guys. Um, you know, you beat the Hart Foundation um, in non-title matches. Uh, they get DQ'd in title matches. You know, sooner or later, the fans want to see the, the good, that the good guys, that the baby faces can win. And if they don't see that eventually, then, you know, you start to lose popularity. And I could feel that was what was happening. The, the fans were starting to say, well, they're going to have a good match, but, uh, you know, they're not going to win the titles. If they don't believe that you're going to win the titles on any given night, then you've done something wrong. And uh, I think that we were um, not booked properly. And that's, uh, you know, if actually a story uh, from WWE on the Internet. It's called the 10 most wasted talents. And uh, we are in that group, the killer bees. We were at the prime of our life. We were having tremendous matches. The prime time, they could have even turned us heel right after um, we had just uh, won the, um, the uh, Royal Rumble yeah. with uh, Paul Roma and... Um, um, Jim Powers? Jim Powers. Jimmy Powers. Yeah, the, uh, Young Stallions. Young, Young yes. Stallions. Thank you. Young Stallions. We could have turned on them, kicked their asses, and left them per left them hung and naked. But uh, anyway, uh, they didn't let us do that. So um, I don't know. I don't. I DK. I know that, um, you know, and Jimmy will, you know, say, say it right now. I mean, you know, He, he never got along with George Scott, which I don't blame him. And, um, you know, he had lawsuits against Vince, which was he, he, Jimmy was in the right because he won. 
but they shouldn't hold that kind of stuff against us. You know, I mean, look at all the things that uh, some of the other talent have done uh, far more egregious. And then Vince forgives them and puts them back in the, in the spot. But for some reason, um, you know, we didn't, uh, uh, there was, there was heat. Okay. Okay. Uh, what was your reaction when you knew that you were involved in WrestleMania three against Nikolai Volkov and Iron Sheik, as you say so well? Well, um, it was the first Jimmy time I hadn't had a, it was the first time that Jimmy, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't that the first time it was in a uh, title match? Was that? Uh, yeah, that's right. Yes, it wasn't. It wasn't a title. No, match. no, it's no. A, and, and it's as far as event. it was oh, before the event. WrestleMania three. First yeah. off, first off, so you guys know, the two hardest guys in the world to have a good match with is the Sheik and Volkov, because they can get <laughs> more heat. They can get more heat than a uh, 300-pound bully knocking down uh, a poor, feeble woman. Um, but then you can't make a, a comeback, comeback because they take bumps in four stages. They You have to literally shoot, I mean, to lift them up. I mean, lifting uh, Cosro up uh, for a suplex is an act of God. And, you know, it's just <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Well, they weren't the easiest team to work with, and and I, I, I as I look back on that match, I remember uh, they had put us, they further put us down the match, and we were actually right before the you know, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. So, and they had seen I don't know maybe six seven matches. So the people wanted to see Hulk and Andre, but so they had our match against uh, Nikolai and, and the Iron Sheik. And during the course of the match, we had been false finishing and false finishing. Then then they saved. And then they were false finishing us. And Jim Duggan made his appearance that night into the WWE with his uh, two-by-four. USA, USA. Yes, and he <laughs> ran into the ring and he let – both Nikolai and Kazro have it with the plank or whatever it was. And then consequently we were disqualified and we were told that we were supposed to pat Jim Duggan on the back and thank him for coming in and dis getting us disqualified, which never made rhyme or reason to me. And we didn't do it. And yeah. And I thought, geez, you gotta be kidding me. So, I mean, it was, you know, it was a great honor being there, 95,000 people, and we had the best match we could have had. The finish was sort of uh, yeah. bass backwards, but, um, you know, it was a, a big thrill for us uh, to be in that, that match. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's still, I think, the, the largest uh, uh, attended uh, WrestleMania oh, all, inside. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and what was your uh, your re uh, your reaction when you uh, when you enter? Because um, two months ago we uh, we spoke with uh, Ray Rougeau, the, uh, the, Rougeau. The, the, the the fabulous uh, the Rougeau brothers. Rougeau brothers, yes, uh, yes yeah. uh, And he, he, he say hi to uh, to you. So um, yes, tell me and you are uh, very busy with uh, with a lawyer, not a lawyer, but mayor, mayor, mayor. mayor sorry, Robin uh, Mayor. Yes, yes. Uh, And uh, when uh, when we spoke with him, he said uh, that was a lot of pressure when you uh, we go to the ring. So uh, not thousand just, people, not just for uh, the ninety six, ninety three, ninety thousand one hundred and seventy three fans. Yes, exactly. And uh, but uh, that was the first ever um, uh, wrestling uh, pay per view. So uh, and uh, how do you feel? Uh, after this uh this experience well I, i feel great about it no matter what because i mean it's hard to get much higher than heading out <clears throat> in front of 92,173 people and i don't know if they counted monsoon and jesse or not but uh, <laughs> uh yeah on a modified golf cart in a modified pair of underwear yeah uh You know, there's electricity in the air like you cannot believe. I mean, 
it's something that you'd have to be in that position to understand. But it's about as big a euphoria as you could possibly get. And um, uh, I wouldn't trade that experience for you know, any other experience that I've had. It was one of my greatest, uh, most enjoyable experiences of my mm -hmm. wrestling. Yeah, because I imagine that this show is is bigger than ever, and just a simple, uh, ju just a simple uh, problem or uh, can impact all your career. So uh, that that's pretty cool. And I remember that 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 was an opportunity to 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 go there because uh, I remember that that was. Uh, Awesome matches, uh, Andre the Giants against Hulk Hogan, uh, Randy Savage against um, Steamboat, Steamboat. Steamboat. Uh, Roddy Piper versus Roddy Adrian Steamboat. Adonis. That, that was yes. probably the, the latter match I seen in my life. Uh, yeah, in the uh, 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, just before uh, the main event, uh, I imagine that you uh, that you were you were nervous. I, you know, I don't think we were that nervous. We, you know, we had, you know, I mean, when you've been in the business X amount of years, you, you realize what's expected of you and you're professional enough to know that you're going to do your best. And that's what we did. And, you know, the match was a success. It could have been a better finish, but, you know, it, it was still a, a, a above par match. So we're happy with it. But yeah. The only problem is it took 12 weeks to get paid. <laughs> yeah because after it takes a long time for all the pay-per-view revenue to come in so i don't know how many people in total actually watched that at the time but i would venture to say that more people have seen um the faces of the people that were on that wrestling card than uh probably any nfl or any other sport um that there is um uh during whatever time you want to compare mm -hmm. um you're actually you don't have anything covering your face unless we were doing mass confusion <clears throat> you um you know you're as exposed to the people as you can possibly be and um you know you have so many um video rentals so many pay-per-views so there's so many ways that the people see you that um you can't even count i, I don't know what the estimates are they they count what's as close as they can but then you've got all the bootleg or the people that watch them for free what do you call that piracy yep. uh, you know you can't add all that stuff but <clears throat> millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people you know you couldn't get on an airplane and people not recognize you uh, for ending uh, gentlemen uh, uh, what can we expect to you for your next few years Good health, hopefully. <laughs> amen. amen, amen, amen. We've been uh, doing a lot, lot of uh, Very important because uh, with no health, you can do That's uh, right. nothing. Not health nothing. is wealth. Remember yeah. that. Every this day is, is a very, gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very important. So uh, thank you so much, uh, guys, uh, for being here for, wow, 40 uh, minutes. That's very, very appreciated, guys. It was an honor to us yes, to yes, uh, yes, speak yes. with you. Yes, thank you so much. I know that you are very busy with uh, WrestleCons and uh, requests and... Uh, Many stuff. interviews. Yes, exactly, exactly. So thank you so much, guys. Jonathan. Uh, it was, uh, John, uh, this is John, Jonathan. Can I ask one question? Can, can, yeah, Nostradamus, sure, yeah. can Nostradamus, Ben, can you please predict Jimmy and I's future? Oh, <laughs> oh, maybe uh, a future uh, WWE Hall of, of Famer introduction. Yeah, maybe. Amen. There you go. I hope for you. I got yeah. the rings already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send you one, Brian. I got five of them. <laughs> this guy sent me. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Jimmy. Can't wait Jonathan to see Ben, uh, this is super important that you uh, you can. Uh, introduct to uh to the you the, deserve uh, it yes you deserve it and you are uh, all uh good lt alive both and uh we, uh we appreciate your your relationship together uh we know that's is uh it's a very uh very uh 
good relationship and uh you're like two brothers yes yeah yep. like yeah. me and jonathan yeah right yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. and uh, just, ju just a, a simple fact: me and uh, my partner Benoit, uh, born in the in July uh, 11, 1984. Wow, that was yeah, a good yeah. date. The Young same babies, <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we understand the uh, the brothers, the connection. Uh, you know what I mean? With two friends. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's yeah right. So uh, thank you so much, guys, for your time. This is thank Jonathan you. from Wrestle Rock Podcast. Uh, I'm with uh, with my partner uh, Benoit, aka Nostrada Band. Thank you so much, my friend. Oh, uh, you're welcome, Joe. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. Thanks, I'll talk guys. to you soon, Brian. Goodbye, gentlemen. Take care, bye. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Peace. Goodbye.